Hello everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel or if you're new around here, welcome. Join the family, Instagram and Twitter. Why not? I had to kick Margaret out because um, she was annoying me, so no cat, just me. Today, full face first impressions, you saw that in the title, not a shock. We have some good things, some things that I'm not that hot on, but nothing that I really hate. My face feels like cement right now though, so without any further ado, so that I can wipe this off, triple cleanse, go to a spa, get my face cleansed again, go to a second spa, you get the gist. I need to chisel this face off. Let's stop fanning around and get in it. I actually feel like I can't move my mouth. Like, I feel like I can't be expressive because my face feels so tight. Anyway, <laughs> let's get in it. I'm gonna, like, prime my skin first and then do eyes. No, I'm not. Hold on. What? I'm gonna start off with eyes because I want to. And I want to do, like, a soft, nice, neutral eye with a wing and then a big, bold, red lip because I want to try that overlining, the snitchery overlining technique, but with a red matte lip. And I feel like I'll need to do like quite a soft eye for it, but we can do like classic glam with a wing and golds. Hi Margaret. Hi baby. I'm just gonna prime the old eyes. Revlon Candid, not a first impression. I can't find my sellotape that I used to do my like looks that use sellotape, so I've got this direct global trading fragile tape that I stole from my brother and sister-in-law's cupboard. This is where you will struggle if you're anything like me. Mm. I'm gonna use this palette and I'm really excited to try it. It's the Lottie London The Rose Golds. These palettes, I bought this honestly because I thought it was kind of a dupe of one of the Huda Beauty little nude palettes I've got, but, and I was gonna put them side by side, but it's not very similar in person. However, it is a gorgeous little nine pan palette and the best thing about it is it is less, less than five pounds. Let me just, just swatch a couple for you. This one's really light, so you're not gonna see like the best in terms of like me showing you how good it is by swatching it, but hopefully it will go on the eye really nicely. And yeah, we're just gonna go for something soft, swishy, pretty, and a wink. I'm gonna use this one. I've not actually used this palette, I've only just swatched it on the back of my hand but I've used the other one that I've got. Um, I can't remember which color story it is. They're just so pigmented, given how cheap they are, and blendable and beautiful, and it's really quite baffling. But this shade is so beautiful. I don't think this palette is gonna work very well on deeper skin tones, but they do have deeper palettes. I'm just gonna use that same brush and go into this deeper brown. We've got quite a nice ratio of mattes to metallics as well. It's like five mattes, four metallics. I buy Lottie London from, I think it's Feel Unique, not Look Fantastic. I always get mixed up between the two because they're not on Superdog anymore for some reason. I'm like not even trying to build up this pigment and it is just building up so well. I have to say Lottie London eyeshadows, I feel like they're really underrated. Especially the like the Twee Lee palette and then these ones, these little ones, they're just fantastic. I'm gonna go in with this peach one just to blend the edges. The only thing I will say is the browns in this palette, the two matte browns are pretty similar. So it is a little difficult to get like a lot of definition between the two shades. But, I mean for less than five pounds, I can't really complain too much. I think I'll go with this metallic. They've got like kind of different formulas. Some are like more just generic shimmers and other like a bit more crumbly 
like really impressive like wet feeling ones so I think I'll use the wet feeling one and try it with a brush oh yeah blend that out a little bit I'm gonna be like a tiny bit cheeky and grab 1988 from my Amrezi palette just on my outer corner because I feel like it's lacking a little bit of depth it's like just this very outer part I think that's a little better now I've deepened it I didn't want to do too much but I also had to deepen it because um I just felt like I didn't really have any definition I don't think I have used the Huda Beauty life liner I've got two of these now and this one arrived like two days ago with all the new melted shadows there is a pencil and a liquid it's like just like a coal I was going to do it on my face like a cold pencil. I don't think I'll use that today. And then, yeah, liquid. And I'm gonna attempt to do a wing. And I suck at wings. So bear with me. I pulled the tape off off camera because honestly I was getting really frustrated and I thought I'm gonna have to wipe this off and start again and then I'm not gonna film because it's gonna be a disaster but actually I think when I put lashes on this is gonna be fine and I feel like I always put that pressure on myself to do these really big bold looks and maybe sometimes just something like this is okay let me know you can let me know I won't be upset I like this this was incredibly difficult to get off my hand I still have a couple of little splodges and off my fingers still on there very hard to rub off and um, it's very matte I will say it kind of feels like it's tight on my eyes just so it's like dried down but I do feel like that's not gonna go anywhere which is great so let's move on to skin I'm gonna have to edit that eye portion down so much because half of it was spent yelling at Margaret because she kept licking herself I keep getting sent these boxes from Beautylish full of um, this brand called Good Molecules. I don't know much about it apart from it's affordable, I think. Um, and they sent this, which is called the Silicone Free Priming Moisturiser. And I thought I would use this as my prep. Just just feels like, like a gel moisturiser. I'm just gonna grab some blobs of it. Start rubbing that. I feel like I put way too much on. <laughs> I definitely did. It soaked in pretty fast considering how much I put on. Um, it does not taste nice. It's definitely all over my mouth. I'm excited for a foundation. I think this is my last purchase and I've not bought anything by the way since like two days after Christmas when I was spending my vouchers and things that I got on like Christmas money. I got the Smashbox foundation. I've been told like all year to buy this, like since it came out, people have been saying, Melissa, you'll love it, try it. So I got it. It's the Smashbox Weightless Feel and Oil Shine Control Full Coverage Studio Skin 24 Hour Foundation. I picked my shade online and I went 1.1 Skin Tone Fair Light Undertone Neutral. I feel like I don't know what undertone I am. Am I yellow? Am I pink? I'm pink on some parts of my body, yellow on others. This is what it looks like. Should be 30 mils, I hope it is. So let's try it out. I'm gonna use my color drain sponge that I love. A few of you asked about this sponge when I used it last week and I don't know if they still have it available. I think it was like a Christmas release. Okay, it's not right, but we'll make it work. We'll take it down the neck or I'll change my top. I just, because I love full coverage, I think that's why people tell me to try this. Um, I've had kind of hit and miss experiences with Smashbox, so I'm hoping this is a hit. Wow, the coverage on this is pretty epic. I will zoom in and go a bit 
darker so you can really see but I really don't feel like this is the right color for me this is coverage my goodness all of you that have been telling me to buy this like <laughs> I can see why I would say it's one of those full coverage bases that is so full coverage it feels even on my face like a mask let me show you up close like that is coverage right it's 100 percent the wrong tone for me like my neck is paler and pinker and i'm only going to put the tiniest bit on my forehead because forehead lines Thick full coverage foundation is not going to look great. We will work it out. It's probably way more than I needed to put on. It's quite thick, but it does blend out very, very easily. It's a very kind of dry feeling foundation. Like, not dry. I don't feel dried out or anything. Although, I really don't know how this would work for dry skin. It just feels kind of self-setting. And, like, I don't really need to put a lot of powder on. I'd probably use this for, like, a night out because I want to look flawless all night and look like my best but day to day I probably would not reach for this foundation just being honest I'm just not so much I think like my skin looks great and it looks really evened out and everything but I feel like it's just so full coverage and I don't need it this next product I'm using for my girl Sylvia and um, she's asked me to use this a million times and I was actually going to use my NARS new NARS concealer and I'm not doing that Sylvia for you. I am going to test today the Iconic London Concealer. What is it called? Iconic London Concealer. Seamless Concealer. They sent me a bunch of shades and I think just from like looking through the tubes I'm going to use this one at the end that looks the palest. This is in the shade. Hmm. Lightest Nude. And I don't know anything about this. I don't know the claims. It's got a nice long doe foot. So yeah, let's, let's try this out. Seems quite yellow toned as well, although it's obviously paler than the foundation. I'll do one eye at a time. I was just watching Shan Exo's declutter yesterday and I don't know which video she used this in. I might have missed it, even though it's very rare for me to miss a Shan Exo video. And she actually decluttered this, but she said she did like it. So if she likes it, it's very likely that I will like it. I've got to say, I was worried it wouldn't blend very nicely over this base because it does feel quite set. That's blended really nice. And it's definitely a lot brighter than this under eye, although I will say, just because I use such a full coverage foundation, do I need concealer? Not really at all. Like, this is hidden everything. But it's nice and bright. And I might use more than I need to just to kind of highlight my face yeah, it's got a really nice doe fit for getting that like um thin nose line i don't need any of this anywhere but <laughs> just to try and highlight it's blending really nice over this foundation as well which is surprising I'll need to use this concealer again in like my next video when I use a foundation that I know and love already and know what finish it is because I don't know really what finish this concealer has because of the mask that I have on underneath it it's just it's just hiding everything I'm not complaining about this foundation by the way at all like it is full coverage dreams I don't know if it's the primer like the moisturizing primer or the foundation or what it is but i do feel like my pores look really good and my skin looks very very smooth like it looks very unnatural but it looks like instagram flawless i feel like if you've got a lot of redness you want to cover up or anything like that then this foundation is probably going to be your best friend i do have a few new powders but i'm going to save them because i've got enough makeup for another full face first impressions um 
I do though have the Real Techniques powder sponge. Do I though it's fallen under my desk and do I want to get it? Is this like microfiber? Yes, it says it on the thing. Microfiber technology. Feels like the Juno and Co sponge, if any of you have tried that one. And it's built for maximum powder pickup. Let's try that. I'm gonna use my Jeffree Star powder because I have been reaching for this a lot and I'm trying to use it up to be honest. I have quite a lot of fine lines under my eyes and they are not looking very nice. Anyway, so I think you use this sponge dry. I'm not sure. I actually prefer baking with a dry sponge and I think that's maybe a more unpopular opinion. I just, I don't know, I quite enjoy it. I mean, talk about maximum powder pickup, that is kind of nuts. But is it that important? Because you can literally just keep adding powder if your sponge doesn't pick up enough. No? I guess the powder just like sticks to the microfiber and then that's what you get. I mean I look, I've got a lot of powder on don't I? So I guess it does what it says on the tin. <coughs> I have never ever coughed putting powder on in my life. And I don't know what it is. I'm just gonna finish off my Makeup Revolution Lace powder for the rest of my face. Cause to be honest, I don't really need a lot of setting and I just wanted to bake to test out that sponge. But I really did not need to. Wow. I am very set. I need to use a setting spray because this could maybe start to feel a little dry and uncomfortable. I actually think that Real Technique sponge picks up too much powder. Like there is so much on my face that I'm gonna just dust off that it almost feels like a waste. And I never usually get that impression when I bake. I don't think I'm making much sense but I feel like it's all just kind of sitting on the top of my skin and then I'm wiping off this really thick layer into the universe oh, of expensive loose powder. This foundation really does dry down its own that although I put it all the way around my neck it's not on my white t-shirt like it's not rubbed off at all. I thought I brought over a setting spray. I'm going to try this NYX one. This is the NYX dewy finish. I know most of you probably will have tried this. However, I haven't and a lot of the products I'm using are quite high end so I want to use like a drugstore one instead of like the Urban Decay or the Too Faced or anything so. I will say I am desperate for some hydration on this face. And it's got a fairly nice spray, a little bit splotchy nothing too bad and I would say that it's added a bit of a sheen. We'll see it as it dries down. It's dry now. I feel like I do look like I've got a little bit of a sheen. Do I? I feel like I do. I mean I still look very makeup-y. You have to ignore my dry lips, sorry. Very makeup-y. Mm, a bit darker. I don't know if you can see it under my eyes. It looks okay, but it doesn't look like brilliant. But there's literally not a blemish on my skin anywhere. I am very excited to use this contour. I got this in my glossy box advent calendar and I still haven't used it. And I'm very excited. It is the Tarte Park Avenue Princess Chisel Palette, which looks like this. If you didn't see my glossy box advent calendar this was like the main one. I think this was Christmas day or bo Christmas Eve. It's just so beautiful and I'm very excited to use it. I think I'm gonna use the shade Carrot because it looks like it's actually the only one I could really contour with 
these three are just a bit dark. Let's go in. I mean, my, my face is going to look flawless today. For going to Tesco to buy some crisps. I think I've only had like one Tarte face powder before and it was the Park Avenue bronzer. Quite liked it. Oh, she pigmented. I like that stripe look. I would actually say this palette is a little too dark for me. Like, all in all, a little dark. Um, so if you've got medium or deeper skin tone, these are probably quite nice. But if you're very pale, and I'm actually wearing a foundation that's too dark for me, then this could work. Couldn't work if you're pale. Could, if you use a light hand. Which is not really what I'm known for doing. I just got some stripes. I'm just gonna have to mix it with this light kind of banana one to make it work. I mean, we might as well go the whole hog today though because we're just going full coverage. It is blending nicely over this base because it is so set in place, like nothing could possibly like skip or drag or look patchy unless it's just like a really bad product because this base is bulletproof and the only reason you'd need setting spray with it is to like soak up powders that you're putting on top or to try and make yourself feel less dry <laughs> oh dear I might just do that Jaclyn Hill thing where I like carve under here with powder because This is okay, we can fix this. We can fix it. I'm gonna use that ridiculous amount of powder on that sponge, see if that helps. Oh gosh, that looks terrible. I'm not blaming this palette. I actually think this is like pigmented, it's doing what a contour needs to do. I just think it is too dark for my skin tone. I can be accused of wearing too much makeup, but I don't think I usually look quite so stripey. It's just too dark for me, um, which is a bit of a shame. I definitely wouldn't do my nose with it again. But I'll keep using it on my face and just use a lighter hand because I want to get use out of it. You'll be glad to know, oh, you'll be glad to know we have a cheaper bronzer to try. It's the Rimmel Radiance Brick Multi-Tonal Shimmer Powder. It's supposed to be a bronzer, I think. It might be a highlighter for deep skin. I'm not sure, so I'm gonna focus on this middle section and put it on. I have a backup new bronzer, but this might actually be quite nice because it might give me some radiance that I feel that I desperately need because I can't with good conscience go in with my lovely Makeup Revolution skin finish right now, can I? I don't feel like this is bronzing me in any way Has that done anything? I don't think it has I'm gonna then go in with a little bit of what was one of my very last fun purchases which is this Natasha Denona mini bronzing glow and I'm going to try the bronzer side which looks very dark and very pigmented and I'm a bit scared. The highlight side is definitely way too dark for me to use as a highlight and this is way too dark as a bronzer. Do you know what sometimes first impressions go really well and sometimes they don't and that's just facts of life. Just like the birds and the bees. I've got Natasha Denona highlight to try as well. Yes, we do. I don't really mind that bronzer blended out actually. I think it blends out quite nicely. It's definitely added a bit more warmth to my face. So glad I've tried this now because I can properly like really start trying it and playing with it all the time. Um, I've got the diamond and glow for the highlight. That's what we're going to do, however. I am um, lost my sponge. I am though just going to kind of do that Jaclyn Hill thing where she bakes underneath her... Oh, this is the wrong powder. 
or she bakes underneath here because I feel like I took everything a bit too low. The sponge does feel nice, like it feels really nice and glidey on the skin and just places that like powder down nicely but I do feel like it picks up a little too much. Blush! Oh, I've got Barry M. Cheap. Barry M Blusher Palette. Looks like this and I wanted to try this because I knew I was going to do like a neutral eye and so a nice neutral blush will be nice and I'm gonna... I don't have a blush brush. This is a Molly O'Brien. M016. I'm going to use this peachy coral but I'm going to mix it with this much lighter one because I really don't want a lot of blush, I just want like a hint of it. Why am I doing blush? I was the highlight first. This is a lot of kick up in the pan by the way. Was this in my glossy box advent calendar too? You know what, that is a really beautiful colour. I don't know though if I should have wiped up Bake Off first before putting my blush on because it's going to look quite stripy but let's just take that off now. Those two shades of blush though together are very very beautiful. Um, let's do highlight and then I'm going to put more settings for on because I feel like a little dry. So this is the Natasha Denona Diamond and Glow and it's got this gorgeous, gorgeous glowy blush which is utterly stunning and then the highlight really reminds me of the Fenty one that I've got. It looks like very glittery, very shiny. So let's let's test that out, see how glittery it is. It's definitely got glitter in it so if you don't like glitter you are not going to like this. In fact, I think I'm going to have to put a highlight on underneath it and then put that on top because that is literally just little flecks of glitter and it's not really got anything to stand out on top of. So I'm going to use my Jaclyn Hill Extra first, just very quickly, so ignore this. I did a full video if you want to see. And then I'm going to go on top with this because now I feel like it has something behind it. But I don't know if this might be better used wet. Maybe someone can tell me the best way to use that. Because I do just now have glitter all over my face, which I'm not hugely mad at, but it's not like a proper highlight. I think it's supposed to be more of a topper, but I could be wrong. Or maybe I'm supposed to use it wet, I don't know. And yeah, I did put my blush on at the wrong time, so I'm just going to go with a tiny bit more. melt my highlight into my blush, into my bronzer, into my face. Well, I've got glitter in my eye, definitely. I think I have a new mascara. I do actually, I've got this Rimmel Wonder Luxe Volume and I only kept it because I like the pink packaging because I don't really test mascaras and this is probably a bad day to test it. It's got a plastic wand, which I like. I prefer plastic ones. It's probably not the best day to try it now, it's definitely not because I've got so much liquid eyeliner in my lashes that they're just all clumpy and disgusting. Wow, they are so bad. It's fine, that's what false lashes are for. <laughs> Let's just run a couple of these shades under underneath. Um, we'll just go medium brown and peach because we are keeping it very simple pigmented even over a set base, which is good. I really still don't love neutral eyeshadow looks. No, I do like neutral eyeshadow looks. I don't like natural eyeshadow looks on myself. I just never feel 
that good when I have such natural looks on. But a lot of you do tell me that I really sit them and that I should do them more and I just have to trust you. You know? I just feel like Shan XO does it all the time. Like she does these really like not over the top looks with a winged liner and she always looks fantastic and why can't I do that? And I know it's me that's saying I can't do that but still I'm going to throw some lashes on and then we're going to come back and we're going to try the overlined lips with the red. Um, let's just do one coat of setting spray because I feel very dry. I put on these unicorn lashes in the style Lemon Meringue and I swear I probably only once put on a pair of unicorn lashes that to my eyes look like they match. Like I feel like these don't match. Also my wings got really out of control because I made a mistake so this is one of those failure videos. I am going to blow your mind with how many reds I have to choose from. Hold on. We got reds coming out the wazoo. Um, many reds. Many, many, many reds. And I think, just because I have the matching lip pencil that I might use this Lottie London one. Um, it's also one of the more affordable ones I've got in the bunch. The reason I'm nervous to try this overlining trick with red or like any other colour that isn't nude is because surely it's going to be quite hard to like remove the lip liner that you don't need but we're going to try, shush, uh, so I'm just going to dive in and try it that I've not told you the colour. I'm going to use Lottie London Slay It Lip Liner and Liquid Lipstick. I've got it in Nude as well and I really like it, I've actually used it quite a lot. can't remember what the shade's called but anyway, we'll do red. Oh, I probably shouldn't start on the bottom, but it's too late. I actually feel like Lottie London as a brand are underrated. This looks like garbage right now. I understand that. I'm going to like clean it up and finesse it. But I'm just going to give you the look liquid lipstick on first which is a lot brighter than the lip liner obviously I've got foundation on my lips but it's like where I've overlined the lip liner is struggling on my skin and I think it's because my base is so heavy and dry that it's like struggling I have really done this in the wrong order, haven't I? I'm supposed to use like concealer first to get oh, everything can be fixed. Especially when I wipe all of this off. This is a gorgeous red though, right? Yeah, I was actually deleting the red quite well. I was just worried that it would be too pigmented to like get rid of, but it's okay. Deepen up the corners now. I think when I wear red lipstick, my lips already look quite big. Um, so I don't think like this is the best test, like a red on me, but I think the nude did really work. Shh, cat. Um, that's kind of us. Alrighty then. I think that's what Ace Ventura said. As Ace Ventura said, okay, let's debrief on what's happened today. I'm gonna go through everything briefly, okay? It's not gonna take long. Number one, good molecules. Priming moisturizer felt nice, sunk in well. Gonna slip that right into my drawer and just use it up because I don't really like wasting products, although I seem like I do. Second up, Smashbox Foundation, holy macaroni. I literally feel like I can't move my face properly, like I don't have my full range of expression because it feels like cement. Do I look flawless? Yeah. On camera, 
do I look like I have like the best skin in the world? Yeah. Would I keep wearing this? Yes, to be quite honest. Although the colour is wrong for me. I would just wear like a high neck top and wear it. I would just put on a lot less. I would buff it out with a brush initially and then like use my sponge to finesse it or like mix it with moisturiser or something like that. If you've got oily skin, I can imagine this is going to last well. If you want that full coverage, it's going to last well. It is up there with the fullest foundation coverages that I have in my collection. It's kind of intense, a little bit much for what I wanted today, but I'm glad I tested it and I will keep using it on my channel because it cost me a pretty penny. This surprised me. I honestly hadn't tested it before now even though I've had it for months because I thought it was going to be crap. It's not. It was nice. Can I really tell how good it was? No, because my base is so full coverage. However, I will try. I've got a really itchy ear. Hold on. I keep finding like Margaret's hair where it shouldn't be. I will again test this out on another day. I feel like, I don't know if they sent me the palest colours or not, but I feel like the colours don't run that light. Um, hopefully they have paler colours, but I mean, I'm happy to keep playing with it. I was happy with how my face looked and my under eyes didn't look that heavy considering how much product I had on, so that's good. Powder was old stuff, we don't care about that. This palette and these little palettes, I think they're £4.95, they often go on the sale for like £3.50. I would hazard you all to go and buy them all because they are fantastic. I really want the pink one, I really need that. I probably will buy that soon because I'm just so impressed by these. The other one that I've got is a lot deeper and I feel like I get a bigger range with it. However, this like wet feeling metallic, like that on its own is worth like five pounds. <laughs> when you wet it and put it on your eye, whoo, dreams do come true. It blends easily, it's pigmented. These are fantastic, highly recommend them, not sponsored wish I was. Just like the lip liner and liquid lipstick, I've got these in the nude set as well. Really enjoy them, very cheap, very inexpensive. This is one of the most beautiful reds in the world. I'm not going to show you up close because my lips look like garbage, but when I don't have like this level of foundation on my lips, these are excellent. Really good lip liners, really good liquid lipsticks. Highly recommend. This Tarte palette. I kind of don't like Tarte as a brand to be quite honest. I find them very 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 boring Boring and more boring. This was really nice. It blended really well. It did look a bit stripey But I just went in with too heavy a hand which is normal for me. I can It's probably not gonna be great if you're pale like me and paler than me because I'm wearing too dark a foundation like I don't know if I can show you like compared to my chest, my foundation is way too dark and this was too dark for me. So I'm gonna keep using it, 100%. With a much lighter hand though. This Rimmel Radiance Brick, can someone tell me what it is? Cause it literally came up when I typed in bronzer and it's not. It says to contour and highlight face features. I feel like it didn't do anything. Um, Let's see. I mean, that's kind of bronzy, isn't it? Maybe I just need to use a more dense brush to pack it on because I felt like nothing happened. But the Natasha Denona Bronzing Glow, mm, I like this. I thought it was going to be way too dark, but it actually is a little, I don't know if it's sheer or if I just used the right amount of pressure when I picked it up because this was excellent and I really, really enjoyed it. And these are £16. Where's the blush one? Hold on. These are £16 and I kind of like collecting them. I've got one more. Where are you, my darling angel? Yeah, I got the blush and glow, I've had this for a while, and then these are my kind of two newer editions, although I've had them for months and never used them. Um, I really like that bronzer, I'm very happy to slip it into my drawer. Um, this one is a bit odd, I really love the blush, and to be honest, the blush is the main reason I bought this, because you know me and a glowy blush, we're like this. But, was that really rude? I'm going to edit that out. This is gorgeous. Someone please tell me how to use it because I feel like it, it just kind of puts glitter. Yay, see if you use your finger you get a much better effect. There we go. I've learned how to use it. No, I'm serious. Tell me. It's very much like the Fenty Diamond Bomb where it's just tiny, tiny, teeny, tiny particles of glitter that look gorgeous on the skin but you are just putting glitter all over your face and I feel like it 
kind of emphasizes your pores but i don't know i'm a bit a bit mm, on that one do you know what i really enjoyed this actually these are very 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 peach toned which is very very welcome in my makeup collection i've got a lot of peach blushes but there's always room for more i think this is really cheap for four powders this shade is a bit weird because it's like very much like like apricot colored but mixed with the deeper ones creates a beautiful peach straight in the blush drawer this liner oh the huda liner i don't really love this i love how matte it is how black it is it's probably gonna last all day i think that's like the biggest claim for it is that it's really long lasting and it does have a double side which is cool however i won't be able to show you because i did try and show you and it just wasn't working it's got like quite a weird texture it's almost got the texture of eyelash glue that's what i would say it's the same as it's literally like black eyelash glue and i know that's not what it is but it's just a weird texture to work with and i did feel like i prefer the brush on the abh one it's much much finer however this probably does work out more expensive because this is double sides i don't know i can't remember the prices of both so i will definitely keep it and keep using it because i always run out of black liquid liner even though i very rarely seem to do wings but it's not a favourite, for sure. I would have to keep playing with it, obviously. Um, we didn't really use much else. This was nice. Pretty good spray on it, considering it's drugstore. Usually they're not as good. I was pleasantly surprised. Mascara, who knows? I had the worst gunky eyelashes. <laughs> eyelashes from putting liner. Anyway, that was a lot of talking. So thanks for listening. Um, that's me done. I'm gonna go wipe this off and then go to Tesco and buy lots of crisps. As always, let me know what products in here that you've tried that you swear by or that you've tried and you hate or products that I really need to invest in. So yeah, that's it from me. What do you think? I do like how my makeup's come out overall. Like I would feel very comfortable going out looking like this, just not feeling like this. I feel very, like if I move my mouth too much, my foundation will just like develop a crack up here and it will just literally fall off like a crust but it doesn't feel drying if that makes any sense it just feels very heavy i don't know i feel like i'm complaining a lot about the foundation and i need to keep trying it so just a first impression anyway i'm gonna piss off so if you did enjoy this video please give it a big thumbs up it really helps me out also leave me a comment down below and subscribe it's a polite thing to do the internet is a very impolite place if you ask me my channel has been able to survive this long with the very generous help of my Patreons, so thank you guys so much for all your support. And if you want to join Patreon, the link is down below in the description box, we have a Discord, we have a WhatsApp group, we have a Facebook group, we do lives, members do lives, like Patreons do lives, it's the most fun thing. So if you want to join, it's down there. But if you can't or don't want to be a Patreon, don't even message me saying you feel bad. Never ever think that. Watching my videos is the biggest support i could ever hope for and on that note i really will stop fanning around and piss off and i hope i'll catch you on the flip side Bye.